Thanks to the socialized people. Uh, good to be here. Um, I wanted to share with you a little bit of work in progress. Um, it's now 15 months since we launched our crowd uh, in February of last year. I think we have a couple of our CEOs uh, in the audience. We're now uh, 40 companies strong, 5,000 investors worldwide, and we're actually the world's largest platform for equity crowdfunding being run out of Israel. We're really kicking the butt of the people in Silicon Valley, and it's good to see that here in Israel, we're not just the world's other Silicon Valley, but in certain areas such as crowdfunding, we can actually win. Um, what I want to do is spend a little bit of time talking about crowdfunding in general, talk about equity crowdfunding in specific, and then share with you some of the experiences and challenges which we're having at our crowd. So if you look at the market, the market is literally on fire. Um, we're talking about $5 billion spent last year on crowdfunding. This year, the uh, thoughts are in excess of $10 billion. It looks like the market is going to be growing at 100% a year for several years going forward. That doesn't seem to be slowing down. Now, the, the biggest part of crowdfunding today is what's called peer-to-peer -peer lending, where you basically lend money to other people without a bank. The biggest company is called The Lending Club, which just, I think, announced that they've crossed the $4 billion in lending amount. Prosper is competing with them. They've already crossed a billion dollars. So these are very, very big businesses. We all know about Kickstarter and Indiegogo, which are what are called reward-based crowdfunding. And it's funny because what's the reward typically? A t-shirt. You know, if you're lucky, maybe it's a CD or a, a DVD, you know, of a movie or a, a game. But what happens on, on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, as you well know, is that you back a project and you get some kind of a tangible or intangible reward. But you don't get stock. And what's interesting about the Kickstarter experience in particular is this has really become the filter for many new gadget companies, or especially in the, what's being called the sort of rebirth of hardware. If you want to prove to your venture capital people or to the market that you've got something really cool for the consumer, then you launch on Kickstarter. And people can raise millions and millions of dollars. There is also donation-based for the charitable set. And finally, there's equity crowdfunding, which is, is essentially giving you stock in small companies. And we'll talk a lot about that in a second. Um, I don't know how many of you know about Oculus. Just raise your hands if you've heard of this company, Oculus. OK, so only about half. Uh, you should know about Oculus, because it's an important company, and it's important in terms of what's happened to it relative to the crowdfunding market. Uh, Oculus Rift, uh, just on the actually cover of uh, Wired, the 21-year-old founder, came up with this incredible VR goggles headset. And two years ago, they went to go raise their first money. And what do you do if you've got a cool gadget? You go to Kickstarter. So they went to Kickstarter, and they raised $2.4 million, which is a big chunk of money, especially when you don't have to give up any equity. And people got some t-shirts, and if you gave a lot of money, you actually got a chance to play with an early prototype. And within two years, this company was just recently bought by Facebook for $2 billion. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, the people who gave the first money who took the risk, who got this thing off the ground, they got a t-shirt. And the founders got rich. Now, not necessarily should the people who have given that $2.4 million become billionaires, but the question's being asked a lot, saying, wait a minute, we took the risk, we gave them money, we got this thing started. All I get is a, you know, it's not a lousy t-shirt, pretty good t-shirt, but it's not fair. And so what's happened now is a lot of focus has been placed on the equity crowdfunding site, which says, OK, wait a minute. I'm willing to go ahead and take risk. I want to back early stage entrepreneurs. I want to you know, help innovation. But for crying out loud, if it gets sold for $2 billion, give me something. OK, give me a piece of the action here. So this has been very, very good for sites like our own. And what, what's happening now in the equity crowdfunding space is really there's been a division between two general types. Everybody thought that equity crowdfunding was going to essentially look like Kickstarter, but for stock, meaning that you could put 50 bucks in or 100 bucks, and it would be for everybody. Millions of people would be funding the next companies. 
There's only one little problem with that model. It's called the law. Okay, it's called securities. If you want to sell a company to the public, typically you need what's called a tashkif. You need a prospectus. And so in the US about two years ago, there was a law passed called the Jobs Act. It wasn't named for Steve Jobs. It was called Jumpstart Our Business Startups. And they proposed that this kind of broad-based crowdfunding for equity would be legal. And basically, Congress passed it, Obama signed it, handed it over to the SEC, and said, now you figure out how to write the regulations so everybody can essentially crowdfund startups and get a piece of the action. Well, it's been two years, more than two years, since that law was passed, and there are no regulations. The closest we've got is back in uh, September of last year, which is now, uh, oh my gosh, nine months ago, they published 500 pages of discussion with hundreds of questions. Because this, frankly, is a tough nut to crack. How do you let people put 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks in? And how do you protect them from the future Bernie Madoff juniors who can simply put up a dumb or good little video and say, I'm going to turn you know, crap into gold, and people start sending money and lose their money? And so the SEC, which takes their responsibility very seriously for protecting the small investor, is sitting and trying to figure this out. But in the meantime, people like ourselves at our crowd and a few others said, wait a minute, maybe we can do this crowdfunding, but do it today under existing legislation, and we'll have to unfortunately limit it to rich people. Okay, it's not cool. Okay, I'd much rather let everybody do it. But the law has always had a very, very big exemption for funding private companies for what are called accredited investors. Accredited investors are people in the US who have a million dollars of net worth outside of their house or $200,000 of income annually. Sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. But do you know how many people there are, how many households there are in the US that have that amount of money? Yes, somebody raise your hand. How many? Five million, good guess. 10 million. There are literally 10 million households that have those kind of criteria. So worldwide, by the way, about 50 million households. So when we found this out, we figured out that this actually is legal, and we don't need to wait for the SEC to come up with new legislation and new regulations, we said, let's go. Let's start crowdfunding. It can include everybody, unfortunately, but it can include those people who have those amounts of, uh, of money. So together with sites like AngelList, which you've probably seen, or Funders Club or others, we started doing this kind of equity-based crowdfunding. And the way we look at it, at least, is a, essentially a, a hybrid, if you will, between angel investing and venture capital. The idea is that to be an angel today is to have a lot of fun and to be totally free, right? You sit down with a, a cool company, you fall in love with it, you can sit literally at lunch and write a check to the entrepreneur. Give him a half a million, give him 50,000, 25,000, you make up your own mind. The only problem with being an angel, and one of the major problems, is you really are on your own. You can pick up the phone and call, you know, Yoam and... Uh, Dalit and say, hey, you know, join me and send 25 and 50K together with me. But somebody's got to do the diligence. Somebody's got to write the documents. Somebody's got to put this whole thing together. And then you've got another problem, which is once you've actually invested in the company directly, you own shares directly in the company. And typically, the amount of equity you own is so little that you don't have the real rights that investors get when they invest in a startup. You guys know that when venture capital funds come into a company, they buy rights. They buy preemptive rights, they buy drag-along and tag-alongs, information, anti-dilution, and these rights have a minimum owner th ownership threshold, typically of anywhere from two to 5%, which the angels don't get. So angel investing is fun and cool and great and can be very productive if you're good at it, but it's also hard. And the reality is that 98% of these accredited households have never made an angel investment. And we say, how could that be? Everybody I know is an angel, right? Israel, we're all angels in California and Silicon Valley. There are tons of angels. 
But the reality is the average rich person, they know bupkis about this stuff. They are not involved. Okay? They don't understand it. They don't know what a term sheet is. They don't know what a preemptive right is. Forget it. They're not involved with this. So on the other hand, you got venture capital, which of course has been the engine for innovation forever. And it basically hasn't changed. Right? If you look at the venture capital industry, for 50 years, has anything changed? Maybe the companies we back, okay, maybe you know, some of the prices go up and down. But if the fathers, the great legendary fathers of venture capital came back and went to Sand Hill Road or here in Herzliya or Rothschild, they say, same old, same old, right? Nothing has really changed. And it, by the way, works very well sometimes. If you're an investor and you have $5 million or $10 million to give to a great fund and you can get into it, that's cool. But can you guys get into Sequoia or Excel as an investor? The answer is no, you can't. I don't care how much money you have, right? You might have hundreds of millions of dollars, someone sitting right here right now. But you pick up the phone and call Sequoia and say, hey, let me into your next fund. Forget it, it's closed. And what happens if you have only 100 grand or 500 grand? Can you get into a venture fund? The answer is not. Do you get any love with your companies that you invest in when you invest in a venture fund? No, these guys manage it. They do a professional job. They're going to do the deal selection. So what if you could create a hybrid where somebody actually checked the deals out for you, did the curation, if you will, found the right deals, did the diligence, negotiated the whole thing, and then gave you the ability to be an angel, to make up your own mind, to fall in love, and to get in not with a $5 million or $10 million check, but with a $10,000 check. And that's what we did at our crowd, is we essentially built a platform that we think combines the best of these two worlds. So if you look at what we've done since we launched back in February of last year, we've actually now invested over $50 million, five zero million dollars in 40 different startups. We've actually done, so far I think it's 16, and it could be you know, out of whack, follow-on rounds. So that the companies who are on our site are raising additional money already very, very effectively. And that was one of the big questions we had, is that, well, maybe we'll be able to raise money, but will people come back and provide additional money? And we're finding that that's very much the case. I think our deal flow is getting better than it was in the beginning. We're getting actually a positive feedback loop, where instead of getting sort of the, the loser deals, if you will, which some people said, hey, maybe this will work, but this will be for sugbet companies, right? I mean, what real good company isn't going to want to go to a venture capitalist? Well, guess again, because there are a lot of people who would like to work with a crowd, especially if we move faster, and the truth is we do move faster than most venture funds, and that we can provide value like the venture funds. Um, let's talk a little bit about how we're differentiated. So first of all, we don't do crowdfunding sort of the traditional way where you take a, a number of those rocks or jelly beans and you ask the crowd through its infinite wisdom to come up with a number, right? We just don't let any company go to our site. We take 2% of the companies that we evaluate and we put them up. So 98%, they're not bad companies. Some of them are, are excellent. I'm sure we're missing all kinds of great opportunities. But we unfortunately only accept 2%. So we've put up 40 companies and we've looked at 2,000 different companies. The other big difference is we put our own money where our mouth is. About 5% of every deal that we put up has my capital and my partner's capital. If we're not prepared to put our own money to work, then you shouldn't trust us and you shouldn't join us. We also only let accredited investors on. So if you go to our site, for example, and start looking at it and say, I don't, I don't get it, you have to register. If you don't register as an accredited investor, you see nothing. We then take all of the people who invest in a given company and we aggregate them into a single vehicle. I'll show you what it looks like, actually. From, uh, and I hope that doesn't you know, make too many people crazy. But basically, we have a, a general partner which organizes the whole thing through a management company. And we have an investment vehicle, which is where we invest our own 5%. And then we take all these accredited investors and we aggregate them into actually what's something that looks like structurally 
an individual venture capital fund for a specific company, and then we write the single check for the portfolio company. Now, what's the advantage of that, and why is that good? Well, it's really good for the company. So if you ever tried to chase 50 angels or 30 angels, it's no fun. I've literally had to go find people sometimes on a sat phone in Alaska to get them to sign documents via the sat phone so that we could close a funding round. And now you have one check, one investor, instead of 30. On the other hand, the investors get protected by a single entity. We actually take board seats. You say, well, how do you do that if you've got 40 companies already in like 15 months? And by the end of the year, we're going to have over 60 companies. And next year, hopefully, we'll have 150 companies. How does that work? How can you sit on all the boards? Well, the answer is we have a mentor program. We're open, by the way, to any of you who are entrepreneurs who would like to join. People who've been there and done that, who've built companies, work with our crowd, and they represent our crowd on these companies' boards. We take board seats where we can get them, and then we appoint our mentors to actually represent and to work with the companies. We think these people can be as good a board members as any venture capital fund. And then we get involved in what we call crowd building. We think that it's not just a venture capital group that can help a company like your own get moving, but that we can actually recruit help from the crowd. We can crowdsource the building of these companies to a certain degree. And it's working like, like a charm. Right now, we have multiple examples of financial rounds that have taken place as a result of crowd building. One of our companies raised $10 million because one of the individual investors made an introduction to that company and said, hey, I think this would be a great fund for you to meet. And that resulted in an up round. We've had countless numbers of business development activities as well as hires that have taken place as a result of this. So if you look at our portfolio, I think it's a, it speaks for itself. Uh, we're missing a couple of the new companies that are up there now that are, I, th I think are in the audience, Imagine and Mentad and others. If you look at some of these companies, you'll be surprised because there are people here who you wouldn't necessarily expect to be involved in crowdfunding. So companies like Hicon, which of course is being backed by Benny Landa. Benny Landa is the largest shareholder. Benny, you know, with his sale of Indigo for $800 million, doesn't really strike you as the crowdfunding type, except now our crowd is the largest investor in that company outside of Benny Landa. If you look at companies like Biocatch, where we just led a $7 million round, and we invested over $3 million. You look at companies like Consumer Physics, where we just invested $3 million, or Abe's Market, which is now the leading e-commerce site for organic products in the United States. And I'm going to upset some of my uh, 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 people here, because I'm going to talk quickly about some of the companies, and I can't really talk about all of them. But for example, we're very proud of being investors in Rewalk Robotics, that's the new name of Argo, which are the guys who make the exoskeleton to allow paraplegics. We're co-invested there with four different venture funds. Of course, I mentioned SIO and Consumer Physics. This was a groundbreaking company because together with us, this company went ahead and raised money on Kickstarter and became the first company to raise both equity crowdfunding and reward-based crowdfunding. You say, well, what, how does that work? Well, we invested early. We were the first money together with Dov Moran in the company. We were followed by a guy named Vinod Koslo, who's a very well-known venture capitalist from Kosla Ventures in the Valley. And then the company went to work and built this incredible molecular sensor. Now, when they were ready to go, they went to Kickstarter and said, you know what, back us. Let's see if we can get some early consumer interest. And would you believe that this has become by far the most popular Israeli company ever on Kickstarter? It's in the top 10 of all Kickstarter projects in all time for technology, and they raised $2.7 million on Kickstarter, in addition to the $3 million which we've invested as uh, crowdfunding and equity. Uh, we're doing companies in the water space like Variegate that are doing smartphone applications for irrigation. Companies like Site Diagnostics, you'll notice that we're not sector specific. We're doing everything from medical devices to clean tech to the internet to social to security. Site is going to be a a tremendous game changer in the world of malaria. Look at companies like uh, VocalZoom. 
who are doing speech recognition by optical, uh, pat, uh, you know, facial recognition in terms of vibrations. Companies like Zula, which is uh, Jeff Pulver and uh, Jacob Nerdeveed's new company, which essentially is like a WhatsApp for business, a heavy duty but light and friendly uh, business col uh, collaboration environment. We mentioned Hikon, Benny Landis' company in the digital packaging industry. Companies like Move Interactive, which are turning every screen into a touch screen. Takes, which is combining video stills at, together. Curio, which is Bob Rosenshine's third company after Answers and Accent. Nextpeer, which we mentioned, uh, a company which is doing essentially multiplayer gaming. There's a, a brilliant 23-year-old uh, entrepreneur, Shai Magzimov. There are now over 100 million users okay, on their multiplayer uh, gaming platform. Parco, which is ways for parking. Native Flow, which is a, a, a company doing a bring your own device security. And we're co-investing with the leading venture capital funds in the world. We're co-investing with Excel, with Index, with Battery Ventures, with Kosla, two deals, with Li Keqing and Horizon Ventures, with Canaan Partners, people like 3M and Microsoft, Carmel Ventures, et cetera. We have a great team. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, we have great mentors who are working with us. We're looking for companies that have really strong teams, that have traction. We're typically focused on the Series B and Series A investing, not so much seed as, as I used to do in the Israel seed days. We've got serial entrepreneurs we're backing. We're co-investing with a lot of great angels. We've now uh, actually signed an agreement with a huge corporation, with General Electric. We hope to announce some others soon who are actually working with us on the platform and co-investing together with the crowd. We've gotten some very, very positive press coverage. And we're very, very delighted to be here in Israel doing this crowdfunding, building a worldwide network of investors now from 60 different countries. We urge you to join us both as entrepreneurs, as mentors, as supporters, and God willing, as investors, as we pioneer this way of creating new capital for innovation and for startup companies. Thank you very much.